Welcome back to Snacks and Facts, Snack Size History, and this thing that I'm gonna burn. Eat. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! First of all, what's with this frame? What's with this terrible camera quality and lighting? Uh, well, my friends are all super talented and busy being super talented elsewhere, so I'm gonna do this video a little differently. But some of you did ask me to kind of make a vlog, which is why I don't need glasses to, I don't need glasses to have thoughts. <laughs> so this is gonna be kind of like a little vlog thing, but um, hopefully we'll get back to the original frame and camera quality as soon as they are busy not being talentedly busy. I did try to do vlogs in the UK, as you'll see in a moment, but um, it was just a bit awkward. Welcome back to Snacks and Facts, Snack Size History, and this thing that I'm gonna drink. Why? Because it's 10 p.m. and jet lag, that's why. I already recorded this, but I f***ed it up, so, you know, whatever. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you some fun kind of vlog-style videos from London with facts. But first of all, today's snack is a cucumber sandwich, the symbol of a posh afternoon tea. It's crustless bread smeared with butter and thinly sliced cucumbers. And as you can see, that is not how I made it at all. <laughs> cucumber sandwiches are usually served with afternoon tea, which is served at about 4 p.m. Cucumber sandwiches are synonymous with posh people and they reached peak pomp popularity in the Edwardian era, which is the first decade of the 20th century. This was due to England's success with coal. More coal meant that they were able to create small glass houses to grow cucumbers. These small glass houses were called hotbeds. More cucumbers meant more sandwiches, meant more time to be fancy. You can now find fancy cucumber sandwiches in morning teas, and you can also find them at the cricket in the UK and India. Mm, I feel like Dean Maggie Smith. Mm -hmm. Posh thoughts and opinions. Nom nom. So let's get to it. I even tried to vlog my experience at the dinosaur exhibit. I love the dinosaur exhibit so much. I wanted to film my reaction, but make it look as if I was taking a photo because I was too embarrassed to actually like preserve my feelings naturally. So I tried to make it look like I was taking a, taking a photo. <laughs> and then. Just accidentally knocked over a tiny child. So now it's, it's time to leave, time to leave. I'm now filming a small section of the Wildlife Garden at the Natural History Museum, which you can visit every day. It is home to more than 3,000 species of British flora and fauna, and it was opened in 1995. I'm filming this particular garden because I'm in love with your bumblebees, your fluffy little bees. I love them so much. When I went there, the garden was a bit wild. They hadn't brought in any sheep recently to, to tame it back. Yes, they bring in sheep. Do you guys know what bird this is? I don't know what bird this is, but the bird was staring at me. I was staring at the bird. I'd like to know its name to make it less awkward. Here we are at the Darwin Center, and that sign's telling me not to look down, but I'm gonna look down. And that weird looking thing that we're looking at is called the cocoon. The cocoon will be 10 years old this year, 2019. It costs $78 million to make. It doesn't just hold 17 million insect specimens and 3 million botany specimens. Oh no, it is also a working laboratory. As you go past the exhibition, you can see scientists in their lab, scientists doing research. It's super cool. This peace pagoda is located in Battersea Park. Daddy, I want a fountain. which is south of the Thames in Wandsworth. Wandsworth, the dodgy end. It was offered to the people of London by a Buddhist order in 1984 to promote peace. Do you remember this guy? In 1984, the Lindo man, AKA Pete Marsh, her archeology span jokes, was discovered in a peat bog in England and was very well preserved after having been dead for almost 2000 years. Yep, the first thing I did when I went to the British Museum was head right upstairs to visit my 25 year old dead friend, Lindo II, just hanging out with my good mate Pete Marsh. He's been huh. dead since huh. either 2 BC or 80, uh -huh. 119, and just hang out with the upper half of his Poor torso. Guy. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate it, especially if you're afraid of change. But anyway, before you go though, um, I was wondering if you could possibly do me a favor. The pilot 
episode of Freudian Slip is out. I am in this Freudian Slip episode, but so, so many of my friends, we'd really appreciate your views and your comments and your thoughts and your love. Please share it around if you do like it. We think it's pretty funny. I laughed out loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a good time. So how was your New Year's? Let me know in the comments. I went to my friend's house and we had a baked tart or a quiche. What was it? What did I eat? And champagne. I don't remember what we did. <laughs>